Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our session called Anatomy Level Up, Building Anatomy Basics Step by Step. So I say, are you worried about learning anatomy? Well, if you are, don't worry, because you're not alone. With so much to learn, it can be a daunting subject area. But the good news is our session today is going to help you with that. So the goal is to develop your 3D understanding and long term memory of anatomy to improve your ability to translate that anatomical knowledge to the healthcare sciences. And we've got a fantastic teacher for you today in Dr. Uh, Sarah Hayward Small. Now, before I hand over the reins, just a little bit about Sarah. Um, Sarah Hayward Small is a senior lecturer at the Department of Biosciences and Chemistry at Sheffield Hallam University. She teaches on a range of undergraduate and postgraduate courses relating to biomedical science across the College of Health, and Health Wellbeing and Life Science at Sheffield Hallam. Sarah received recognition for interactive anatomy lectures at the forefront of practice in the Inspirational Teaching Awards and was faculty award winner 2018 to 2020 and ultimately became the university winner in 2018 and 2019. Um, Sarah's principal research interests centre on the pathogenesis, diagnosis and treatment of human disease and is also the MSc, MRES, Cancer Biology course leader. And Sarah really uses her research portfolio to underpin teaching in nursing, midwifery and other allied health courses. Sorry. Sarah's aim is to enhance anatomy and physiology knowledge in a really creative, informative and authentic way for a meaningful and really engaging learning experience. So I think it's probably time for me to be quiet now and to hand over to Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. OK, thank you, Debs. It's a pleasure to be with you all today. And just from what Debs has just said, really, um, a lot of scientific words are very hard to pronounce. They're really difficult. And my job today is to try and demystify science and to really bring bioscience to life. It's essential for nursing practice. It will, really will underpin your clinical skills. I would like to take you very slowly through um, my approach to teaching. Now, I'm the first person in my family to go to university and I know how hard it is to learn things, especially at this time of year when everything is so new and very overwhelming. But really, it, it, it doesn't have to be like this at all. And my idea today is to try and put things in a very straightforward and straight talking way to you whether you're live today with us and can ask questions or whether you're watching the recording I'm trying to reach out across the airwaves to really bring this to life as well I want anatomy to be creative we're all different everybody has a different style of learning and I think one of the things that really helped uh, my students and when I learned as well is to to draw pictures um, to really bring it to life so if you have a notebook handy and a pen please feel free to draw I might try and draw as well on screen and I will really highlight the things that are essential um, as we start to uh, step up the levels. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about today is to really start to put the platform, the basic building blocks together that will really set you up for learning anatomy and physiology, uh, not only for your nursing degree and for your nursing courses, but lifelong learning for continued professional development. So I've, I've um, developed a series of learning tools that I'd like to share with you today. Um, I call this dot to dot. Now, I'm not sure if you did this as a child, but for me, dot to dots was a series of where you drew, drew lines together and you made connections. And that is the secret of anatomy success, really. It's to, to see what is important and then to draw the dots and make the connections in between. By dot to dot, what I mean is uh, drawing. So you can draw anything, you can draw a heart, you can draw a lung, you can draw a cell, but, but when you draw, um, for thousands of years, people have um, made pictures when they are studying anatomy and it really helps to, to solidify the content. Um, it's a really important part of the learning process. So please do feel free to draw. Um, and again, I'm not an artist, okay? I'm, I'm a real scientist, but I do like to put pen to paper in that way as well. <laughs> 
I also will put some very simple outlines for you as well. And by outlines, these can be acronyms, simple tips of learning. Um, and I will share some of the ones that uh, are personal to me, which I really hope will be beneficial to you as part of your bioscience and anatomical learning as well. I'd like to also introduce my LOL concept, and this relates to about layers, about the outlines and also links. So sometimes when we think about the heart, we want to also think about how that relates to the lungs. So don't learn in isolation, learn with friends, learn in groups. And also when you are learning, please think about the links and I'll highlight a couple of the um, links today um, to really start you on the right steps to anatomical success. Now, I truly believe that the human body is absolutely fascinating. It is absolutely exhilarating for me as well. Now, the future of nursing, it, it depends on good bioscience content. It underpins everything. And patients and service users across the world have higher and higher expectations of their nurses as well. So it's really important to instill these concepts now, many of you might be thinking, I hate science, I hate bioscience. You may have had a, a kind of a negative experience in school or college. In any case, please always have a, a kind of growth mindset. And if you don't understand something, think, I don't understand the kidney yet. Okay, just allow yourself to be open. And when you are learning anatomy, it's very simple. It comes down to two things, structure and function. It doesn't matter if it's a cell or a kidney. Ask yourself structure. What does it look like? Can you draw it? And function. What does it do? What is the job of a cell? What is the job of a mitochondria? What is the job of the kidney or the digestive system? So really it all boils down to structure and function. And these are the building blocks of good anatomical learning as well. So today we will really level up in this session and we'll start off with the smallest things that I could think of today, such as atoms, and we'll build these up to cells. We'll look at the detail of cells. Cells are absolutely beautiful. They are really beautiful. There are over 200 different types of cells and in the body and they all have their own structure and function. OK, just like us in terms of the population of the world, where all individuals and cells are just the same. They're part of communities and these communities are tissues and they form part of bigger structures such as continents. And these are the these are the tissues. These are the organs and the organ system. So you can see how we will layer up as well. And you'll really start to appreciate that you can divide the body into different regions. And I will also introduce some of the basic terminology to you today. Now, terminology is something that you will learn during the course of your studies. You will not be expected to learn the terminology on the first day. So again, be kind to yourself and every day give yourself targets to learn three or four words. And before you know it, you will feel as though that you can speak the language of anatomy. So it's very simple in terms of the dot to dot approach. Please remember to draw things. You may think that's not going to work for me. I just ask it, you try it. OK, draw things, draw the cell, draw the mitochondria, draw the heart as well, because this really does help to visualize it, it within a 3D orientation as well. When you are learning things, you must be able to simplify and outline, and that's key. Sometimes students are overwhelmed with the material. They look at a textbook and it sends shivers down their neurons, okay? Outlines, keep things simple, okay? So you need to think, what are the top five words in this area? Write the words down, define the words, and then draw what that means and really bring it to life. Everybody has a different learning style and you have to do what really suits you as well. Test yourself regularly. Work in small chunks, okay? Work, test and rest, okay? Make sure you have that rest and in between. You can, you can do the test now. At your institution, there'll be various um, formative tests and assessments that you can do. But before you get a chance to do that, 
look in the textbooks, look online. You'll find there's a lot of online quizzes and really test yourself. One of the simplest things you can do is spend 10 minutes learning a topic and then cover everything up, hide all the notes and then come back and with a blank sheet of paper, then try and see how many facts you can recall. Anatomy is not just about recall. Write down the list and then draw and really bring it to life and you will find how easy it is to learn anatomy. I'd like to begin now by going through the steps. So let's do a bit of learning today as well. And let's take the first step together. So I'm going to use quite a lot of images from um, the Ross and Wilson textbook. OK, so you might want to have a look at that, your favourite textbook. And also what I would recommend is with the textbooks, I often go to the summary. OK, the summary or at the beginning, the the um, learning outcomes, because with the learning outcomes, it tells you the key things. And in the summary, it often gives you definitions. So like any good book, I must be honest, I often cheat. I go to the end of the chapter and I look at the glossary and that really brings every component to life. And then when I'm going through the chapter, when I see a word that I've read before, I know it's important and it helps me to remember as well. So let's build things up today. Now, you may recognize this diagram. This is the key message of today. It's about building things up from the very smallest of scientific processes. For example, the atom, building all the way up to the wonderful human body. OK, so I will take you through these processes very slowly. Let's see if we can um, write on here. OK, so. The good news is this is not a chemistry lesson. OK, I love chemistry, but maybe um, that, that scares you a little bit. But in any case, here we have the atoms. Now, atoms are tiny, tiny. Oh, it's almost full of space. They have a proton and a, a neutron in the nucleus and electrons circulating round. And the wonderful thing is atoms then build up to form molecules. OK, so even at a bigger level there. What we're really going to focus on um, next is the cell. Now, I'm sure you've learned about cells at school, at college, and it all starts with learning about the cells. Now, I am a cancer biologist as well, which means that I study uh, normal function of cells. But when disease occurs, when cells start to be behave abnormally, such as the cancer process, I'm watching these intricate patterns okay so there is a lot of detail with the cells as well and it's important to realize the layers so when you are learning anatomy you have to learn the normal or what we call homeostatic the balanced function that we will get when we are in a healthy and happy state and then when you've got an altered physiology which is when disease starts to happen as well and this is all measured on the cellular level. Now, cells, just like us, come in many shapes and sizes. And I'll talk to you about how organized the cells can be and how these fall into natural communities, otherwise known as tissue. OK, so the next step up is tissue here. So you can get, for example, liver tissue, kidney tissue. If you take a piece of liver and look down the microscope, you'll see that Within the liver, there are um, immune cells, blood cells, supportive cells. They all come together to form a piece of liver tissue. The liver is one of my favorite organs. It's the largest visceral organ. It's amazing how it can regenerate. It's very, very unique to the liver. Now, all the tissues come together again to form essentially like a, a country or a continent. And this is often known as an organ. Now we know the vital organs, it could be the brain, it could be the heart, it could be the lung. Here, of course, we've got the stomach, okay? So we've got various organs. And then the organs join up to form organ systems. Now you've heard of the immune system, the digestive system, the respiratory system. <sighs> That's a breath of fresh air, okay? So all of these respiratory systems work together. Fantastic. So the digestive system, 
when you're when you're learning think about the neighbors as well and i don't mean the people live that live next door think about the layers and the links okay so when you think about the digestive system think oh what's the link to the immune system think of another system well about 80% of your immune system is in your digestive system. So when you think about the links, that's when you can really get into the detail. So you can think about all the different things. Hello, Deborah, have you got a question? Could you see a hand going up there? Sorry, Sarah, that was very unintentional. My apologies. Okay. <laughs> so that's sorry. Okay. No, 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 that's right. I thought you had a question on the stomach there. I was going to say in the stomach, it's all full of acid. Now the cells in the stomach are unique because we have to protect against the, the acid of the stomach. Now as nursing students, you'll come across things like, um, like uh, peptic ulcers, yeah? How do you protect yourself from the acid? It's all in the protective cells. And we'll talk about that in, um, in detail in this session today. So where are we on the journey? If you see along the bottom there, I've gone from atoms, building up to molecules, building up to cells, tissue, organs, organ systems, such as the digestive system, and finally, the wonderful human body. It's really important to remember that in the human body, there is about 37.2 trillion cells in the body. Wow, just think about that, trillions of cells. Every cell needs to be maintained within a perfect condition. OK, no wonder you felt exhausted. Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about the cells. Now, the first thing with cells is think about the different links between the cells. Now, this will be revision for you. You may have covered this in school as well. But cells are beautiful. They are alive. They must be maintained in perfect conditions here. And on this slide, we have three of the common cells. We have a bacterial cell. Now, this may be important when you're studying infection control, microbiology. We have an animal cell in the middle. OK, let's face it. The human is an animal after all. And on the right, we have a plant cell. Now, when you look at this, before you get into the detail, think, well, what are the common features of these? It's important to determine the difference between an animal and a plant cell, first of all. OK, now an animal and a plant cell, they have a nucleus. OK, they have a nucleus that contains the DNA. They have jelly-like cytoplasm. They have mitochondria. Whenever you hear mitochondria, think like a battery, like a powerhouse. Yeah, lots of energy, lots of ATP. That's mitochondria there. OK, and they have a cell membrane, but plants, plants have a cell wall. That's a common feature. OK, so if you hear the word cell wall, think plants straight away. And also, of course, you get chloroplasts in plants. These are the little green pigments that you um, see with photosynthesis. And you also see vacuoles in plants um, that are very prominent that have things like sap in them. OK, so you can see there's main differences and they look different as well, don't they? they look different in bacteria. OK, they tend to lack membrane bound uh, features, um, minute organelles. So they tend to have um, a single strand of DNA that floats around in the cytoplasm there. So we'll focus on the animal cells uh, for the rest of um, this talk. And then we will build up until we get to the wonderful human body. Remember, when you look at any intro chapter in your favorite textbook, whether it's chapter one or, or chapter three, make sure you go to the summary images and think, OK, nucleus, that's important. That's what contains the DNA. Very important. Another thing that will always stand out is the ribosomes. This is where proteins are synthesized. OK, so think about making lots and lots of proteins. Proteins are the building blocks as well within the body. We have to make proteins to survive. And this all happens at the ribosomes as well. So really make sure you focus on tables like this within your textbooks to really bring it to life. 
and make yourself tables, make yourself notes, okay, and just pick three key things every day, okay, and think what are the main, main control points. If you were to look, for example, at an airport, you think what are the main bits of the airport, you'd think the plane, the runway, okay, air traffic control, it's the same with the cell, okay, which features are important? They're all important, but some are absolutely paramount. They come up over and over again, such as the nucleus contains the DNA, okay, shown here in purple. In the ribosomes, if you remember, that makes proteins, think ribosomes, proteins. And re please remember that mitochondria are like batteries. They give us lots of energy in order to sustain life. So we've talked about cells. Now let's move up to speak about anatomy now. Okay, so we've already mentioned anatomy and physiology. This means structure and function. Structure, what does it look like? And function, what does it do? And anatomy can either be gross, I don't mean disgusting, yeah? <laughs> I mean gross anatomy, such as the whole heart, the whole kidney. And you may have experience in your institution where you get to practice your dissection skills. If you can't practice dissection, for whatever reason, you can practice this at home. So if you have a potato or a, 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 an orange, you could cut that according to anatomical planes, really bring it to life. So on a large scale, this is what we call gross anatomy. And then very tiny, like cellular components, that's often microscopic anatomy as well. And you can apply it to cells or indeed the whole heart. There are many different types of cells. So we've talked about the structure of the cell, okay? And how for us as animals, we have a cell membrane, we have a nucleus, okay, that contains the DNA. We have mitochondria, think, oh, mitochondria energy, and ribosomes, if you remember, they make proteins. So you see, um, rep repetition often helps with these things as well. Draw them out. In terms of cells, there are over 200 different types of cells. Just think for a moment, name them. You've got cells in the blood, nerve cells, brain cells, connective tissue, fat cells, epithelial cells, muscle cells, the list goes on. Sometimes cells are very quick uh, when they divide and are replaced. Sometimes they, they get replaced every 10 years. Okay, so all cells, just like us, are individual. So how on earth do we start to remember them? They are absolutely amazing. If you look down the microscope, look how beautiful they are, yeah? I'm a cancer biologist and cancer often looks the same, okay? Because it's lost that ability to, to look different. All the cells are the same. It's like um, a clonal disease. Um, but when you look at cells generally, you'll see that whether it's a bone, bones are alive, they're constantly building up and breaking down, releasing calcium. Some of my favourite cells are in the immune system here. The immune system is very popular to study at the moment. Yeah, we've got white blood cells. That's our ministry of defence. And look, OK, there's all different types of white blood cells. And we cannot miss shown here in the top left. This is this beautiful. This is a nerve cell here. And nervous impulses can can travel maybe about 120 miles an hour that's how fast the nervous system can relay signals to each other so the nerves the nervous cell the nerve cell the neuron is built for speed to transmit signals over very fast distances as well so remember when we're building up it's atoms, molecules, cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, and the body. So that is outlined, is very key, very key to understand. And then think of the layers of that. So you could have, for example, a nerve cell, and then you could have a piece of nervous tissue, and then the brain, and then the nervous system. So you can see there are various ways and you realise it's an intricate puzzle and you put each piece in at a time, but it all follows the same format, cells, tissue, organs, organ systems, and of course, the wonderful body. 
How do we organise the cells? The cells fall, just like players on a football field, into four teams, okay? Four teams, okay? This is the tissue. Now, all cells, all 200 cells fall into these four teams. That's easy, okay? Four teams. And I have a, a little uh, acronym that I use personally to remember these four different types of tissue. Okay, a bit of a clue as well. I'm vegetarian. But a good rule of advice, a good piece of advice is, are you ready for this? I always say, never eat canned meat. Yes, I'm not joking. Remember that. Never eat canned meat. Now, you may enjoy canned meat, but not for anatomy. <laughs> okay. And what do I mean by this? Well, N-E-C-M, if you remember that for tissue, never eat canned meat, it tells you about the main tissue components. So N, what do you think N stands for? You're nervous, you will be, it's the nervous tissue, okay? So N, nervous tissue, that's one team, okay? So we've got the nerve, nerve cells in there and the supportive cells. The next letter is E, that stands for epithelial. Now, epithelial is, of, is a, often a word that you may have come across for the first time. Okay, so it's here in big orange letters, epithelial. And think of epithelial, it's, it's essentially like our skin. It's our covering as well. So we have nervous tissue, we have epithelial tissue. C stands for connective tissue. Connective tissue, things like our muscle cells, fat cells, and things like that. Okay, so sorry, we've got uh, nervous system, epithelial, C is for connective tissue, and M finally is for muscles. Now, muscle tissue is in a team of its own. Muscle tissue, just like heart muscle, has to be very strong and durable. So again, it has different characteristics to it as well. So if you remember, never eat canned meat, that's nervous, epithelial, connective and muscle and now you know the four different types of tissue it's as easy as that it can also be one layer thick just like a staircase here one layer thick this is simple tissue so when we talk about epithelial tissue this is the barrier and you, you will imagine in the body we have different barriers okay we have different barriers and we you often have our this like a sandwich a single layer or multiple layers as well so if you see the word simple, it just means one layer. The word stratified means several layers. And this diagram above here shows an example of stratified epithelium. It's a bit like anatomical Jenga. Okay. So there's different types and you will learn these in the textbook. But the key thing is epithelial tissue. It acts as like a barrier. Okay. We have it on the inside and on the outside. So for example, we have it on the skin. And we have um, something called squamous epithelial tissue. Squamous means fish scales. And that's, for example, on the inside of the cervix. Now, whether or not you're in the stomach or the cervix or the kidney, they all have different types of tissue there. So look out for those terms. So we have connective tissue as well. So really with connective tissue, think uh, fat tissue as well things like fibroblasts, cells that are involved in womb he wound healing that's really important for nursing practice as well. Muscle tissue, okay, absolutely fantastic. There's different types of muscle tissue and it changes as we go from the heart to the skeletal muscles and the muscle um, chapter of your textbook will be absolutely fascinating when you think about muscle contraction there and if you're feeling slightly nervous don't be worried about the brain the nerve cells they are beautiful they they conduct electricity they conduct signals as well and you either get the nerve cell or a supportive cell around it as well but please remember the four different types of tissue that's the key message yeah nervous epithelial connective and muscle tissue as well. Don't forget to build that up into organs, okay? So all of those tissues will to come together, for example, to form the heart or the kidney. And then the organs come together to form organ systems. 
And remember the layers. So when you think about the systems, think, for example, of how the systems come together, the skeletal system, the muscular system, the immune system, and often the detail comes to if you can find the connections in between those systems as well. Remember to think about the layers. So, for example, at first glance, challenge yourself. If you look, for example, at the respiratory system and the digestive system, you might think, oh, that's separate. OK, but they work together in various ways, yeah, because they need each other to function as well. And they both ultimately work together to provide energy in those wonderful mitochondria. Terminology, it's just a matter of practice. You can't expect to learn a new language overnight. But again, look at the summaries um, and the glossaries provided in the textbook as well. And you'll begin to learn that there's certain prefixes and suffixes that really do build the language. It will come with time. I absolutely promise. But the thing is to really draw these things, bring it to life. So see if you can now sketch out the different types of tissue, draw the fa your favourite cell, draw your favourite organelle. Make sure you know the outlines. So when you're talking about atoms to molecules to cells to tissues to organs, organ system and body, you realise that there are different steps as you're building up anatomy, knowledge and finally test yourself. Have fun with it. OK, be innovative and do what works for you. And Please do feel free to tweet any pictures that you have made today or anything that you do over the next few weeks. It would be great to see these. Thank you so much for your kind attention, everybody. It's been a pleasure. Oh, Sarah, I just wanted to say that was amazing. Um, some really great tips there. And I absolutely love your energy. It's clear that, you know, you love what you teach. Um, and that is that's the sort of thing that makes a fantastic teacher. Um, so I learned some things. So some of the tips, learning things bit by bit when it comes to um, the new language, the new words, maybe just four words a day. Repetition is really important. Using things like acronyms and mnemonics to help. Um, and I, I will never eat canned meat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a definite. Um, but I did want to say a, a massive thanks. I, I think that was such a fantastic session. So thank you so much. Um, we've got some questions from some people on the line, if you wouldn't mind taking them. Yep. Great. So uh, I've got one here from a student who says, what type of resources are better? The photographic anatomy atlas that includes real cadaver photos or the drawing atlases like Netta? And they followed up by saying, considering that I don't have an autopsy or cadavers in my college anatomy lab. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. Thank you. Um, the answer to that is um, whatever works for you. OK, there's different things. One of the things that I um, that I kind of learned um, as well is is to be innovative as well. So there are lots of fantastic online um anatomy resources you can get apps as well on your mobile <coughs> devices as well um, and what I would say is you need something that's very simple when, when I've looked at some of the resources I am overwhelmed <laughs> and a bit worried straight after download so it's whatever works for you really um, but I do like photography I like real structures as well um, but make things simple okay make things simple so start off by looking at these resources and, and try to draw them for yourself um, for what once I was challenged to to make a spine out of um, clay and I didn't realize how wonderful the spine was until I tried that okay so I, I, I like the real cadaver photographs and I would say it's quite common not be able to access dissections especially within these times where we have some restrictions but practice as well in the kitchen okay if you have a if you have a potato cut this in this sagittal plane okay we've not talked about anatomical planes today but you could really practice as you are cooking at the same time thank you that's a brilliant tip actually um cut it, i mean that might make uh you know cutting your potatoes and getting uh getting your stuff ready for dinner more uh, enjoyable um 
I have another question here, Sarah. How can I learn muscles, the muscular system? I'm fine. It's so overwhelming because we're yeah, studying yeah. them in detail. It is. It's so uh, muscles. We have that from our students as well. Uh, muscle contraction. People think, oh no, Z lines. Ah, um, again, think of this as like a, a love story, really. And the two players in the love story are acting and myosin. Okay, so think again, think of the key players, actin and myosin. And what they really want to do is bind together, <laughs> bind together. And what pulls them apart is energy, ATP. So think about binding. It's called the stroke, isn't it? It looks a bit like a golf club for all of those that you're familiar with muscles. But just think about a, a romance story like Romeo and Juliet trying to come together and then broken apart with energy and then back together. Okay, so when you think about contraction, think about the key players, actin and myosin. Keep it simple. Okay. That's great advice. Thank you, Sarah. Um, <clears throat> we have another question here. What's the best way to test my learning? I know you did give some examples. Again, it, it's completely up to you. Try different things. So one of the most proven um, ways in which you can really consolidate your learning is to set a timer for 10 minutes, pick a page of your anatomy book and spend 10 minutes to study it, only 10 minutes. And then at the end of 10 minutes, cover up the notes and then just take a plain piece of paper and a pen and try and see how much you can recall, okay? And then go back and celebrate the bits that you got correct and make sure you reflect on the bits that you missed. That's really powerful. And the more you practice that, the more that you will get it into your long-term memory. So I really would recommend repetition in short amounts and whatever works for you. You can get anatomy coloring books, crosswords. Okay, just have fun. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, here's another one. Thank you for the brilliant tips. Just wondering how many hours a day do you suggest one should study anatomy to avoid burnout? Do you have any tips for that? Not 24, I'm assuming, Sarah. So, so this is the thing, especially when you're coming up to assessments. OK, mm. it's really hard, isn't it? Now, um, treat, treat your course like a, if you want, you know, treat it like you would a job. OK, so little bits every day. It's better to do 10 minutes every day than nothing at all. OK, do whatever fits for you. OK, I'm a, I'm a busy mom as well. I work full time. And sometimes I have to listen to, for example, podcasts while I'm doing the housework. Yeah, things like this. So you, if you're commuting, you know, download a couple of podcasts, have something on the background. I would recommend that you start with just something like 10 minutes a day. Yeah, 10 minutes a day and then build up to half an hour a day. I'm sure you will do much more when it comes around to exams. But start small and then it's less overwhelming. That's great. Thank you, Sarah. I think so. The next question here is, well, it's not actually a question. It's a more of a statement. I'm worried that I won't learn everything. How much do students actually need to know? It's, it's really hard, isn't it? And yeah. so it's impossible to know everything. So first of mm. all, be kind to yourself and realise that. OK, and realise that, for example, cardiologists have got about 30 years experience of studying the heart. <laughs> hmm. OK, I've, I've got nearly 20 years experience of studying cancer. OK, and so, so, so this is what I mean. We're all we're all different um, experts in different areas. Now, the first thing is it's really important to consolidate what you are learning. I've got another top tip. Play the alphabet game. So for each body system, you know, you can read the chapter and then after a week think, OK, how well do I know the cardiovascular system? Right. Write the alphabet down. We all know the alphabet and then work your way through the alphabet. A is for aorta, B for biscuspid valve. Are you with me? C, carotid. And you'll realise, crikey, I know quite a lot. All That's right. A great tip. So, so just play, play game and, and work in the groups as well to challenge each other. OK, start simple with the glossaries, get the definitions right, and then the details will follow into place. That's brilliant. I love that idea of the uh, <laughs> alphabet game. Um, I was going to say I'm going to try that, but, you know, my anatomy extends to leg and arm and that's about it. Um, 
So I've got a comment here for you, Sarah, and um, somebody on the line saying thank you so much um, and a heart next to it, um, which is lovely. And another question here, what is your favourite anatomical structure? Okay, you might laugh at me, but my favourite organ this week, it does change. I've got my uh, anatomy uh, sweatshirt on, by the way, but my <laughs> favourite organ is the pancreas. Ooh. Now, now you weren't expecting me to say that. And the reason why I say the pancreas is because I think it needs more advertisement because the pancreas is a very multitasking organ. And let's face it, we're all multitasking in this age as well of learning. OK, so the pancreas, we all know, for example, that it releases insulin. Yeah, but it also releases enzymes for the digestive system. We need it. We need the pancreas. The pancreas is a wonderful organ. So that's my favorite this week. <laughs> that's brilliant. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I had a question, actually. I was wondering if there was one, I know it's probably hard to do this, but if there's just one piece of advice that you could give to students just starting out with anatomy, um, just to kind of allay their fears, what would that be? It is. Um, I would say if, if you're feeling overwhelmed, take a break from it and always... And, and I think just, just keep coming, coming back to it. Think of the top tips. Go to the summaries. So when, it's true. When you, are, when you have a chapter, when you have a book chapter, skip to the end. Look at the glossary. Get the definitions right. Everybody can learn 10 definitions. My kids do it at school. So learn those 10 definitions and you'll feel better for it, I promise. That's great. I think that's really great advice because I think, you know, once you have a little bit of knowledge under your belt, it can give you confidence. Thank you so much. Um, some really, really top tips there, which I think all of the students on the line and those who listen to the recording will find really helpful going forward. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who joined us today. Thank you so much for all your questions. And thank you again to Sarah. We really appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone. Pleasure. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.